In this tutorial, I will show you how to work with the Where I Am business rules. Business rules implement business logic of your application. They are always associated with some business object and they handle object behavior, validation, calculation, state changes, and so on. A Where I Am executes business rules whenever the corresponding business object is created or modified. It does not matter whether the object is created or modified by the user, by a process, or by another rule. All rules associated with the business object will be checked and fired if necessary. So let's look at an example. I have a customer business object in my system from the previous tutorials. Let's assume that our system should only accept customers older than a certain age. So if an operator creates a customer younger than the limit, the system will issue an error message and refuse to accept the customer. So my rule should be, if the customer's age is less than some value, report an error message. Let's attach this rule to the customer object. To do this, I click on the Edit Rules button and then click on the Add button to create a new rule. A rule consists of optional conditions, represented by the green area here, and actions, represented by the yellow area. I will give the rule a name and enter the condition. Note that as soon as I click on the condition, a where I am opens a context assistant to help me build my rule. The context assistant lists appropriate constructs of the rule language that I can use based on the context and I can select any value that the context assistant displays. Here we need to calculate the age of the customer based on his date of birth and if it's less than say 18 report an error. The age of the customer can be calculated using the special age function. All available functions in the where I am can be displayed using this icon here. And the explanation for each function is provided in the yellow area to the right of the function. So we double click the age function and specify customer date of birth as parameter of this function. The age has to be less than 18 to be invalid. When referring to an attribute of the object, we should always use the name of the object followed by dot and then the name of the attribute. Now our condition is completed and we can specify the action. The context assistant prompts for all available actions and the explanation of each action is given in the yellow area to the right of the action. One of the actions is report error, which is what we need. So we select this action and then specify the error message that we want to be displayed to the user. Our rule is now completed. We can see how it looks in the text format. The text format can be used directly for more complex rules that cannot be specified using the standard form. Before I show you how the rule works, I will enable the log viewer that will show us in detail how where I am executes rules. To do this, I must go to the where I am control panel, then click on the settings button, then select the logging tab, and then select the, select the appropriate logger. We will be using the application in the testing mode, so I select the test logger. I click on the log viewer and then click on the view button to open the log viewer. Now I can show you how the rule works. So I log into the application using the browser and I can see the list of existing customers. And here I can also create a new one. Let's create a customer younger than 18.
as soon as I click create the system displays the error message and does not accept the customer. Let's see how aware I am does it behind the scenes. We go to our log viewer and look at what's in there. The node here identifies the moment when the user hit the create button, where I am started to execute the rules associated with the customer. There are several rules here, the one that we have created explicitly and some predefined rules that AwareAIM has created automatically to enforce mandatory fields and choices for attribute values. Our rule is evaluated last and as you can see its condition is, a, is evaluated to true since the age of the customer is less than 18. The action of the rule is added to the agenda and executed later here. And then the whole operation is aborted. Let's now create a customer older than 18 years old. As you can see, the customer has been accepted. If we look at the log viewer now, evaluation of the condition was false and so our action was not fired. Note that the rule will be fired not only when an object is created but also when it's modified. Let's find the customer that we have just created and try to modify it to, mo to make it invalid. So I changed the date of birth back to 2001 and try to save it. And we can see the error message here. So as you can see the rule ex is executed again and we cannot make our customer younger than 18. Let me show you some other more complex rules. I have added a relationship to our customer object with the contact node object that stores the details of the communication with the customer, such as its duration in minutes, subject and date. In the customer object, this relationship is represented by the communication attribute. Note that multiple allowed checkbox is ticked for this attribute so the customer can be related to, with multiple contact nodes. Let's calculate total duration of all communications of a particular customer. I have added an attribute to the customer object called total communication duration which will store the result of our calculation. I have marked this attribute as calculated because we will calculate this attribute using rules. Let's add a rule that will calculate the sum of durations of all communications related to our customer. We'll give it a name. The value of this attribute will be calculated as the sum of all durations where the contact node record belongs to our customer. In other words, contact node is in customer communication. This rule will do the job properly, but it's not very efficient because it will be executed every time the customer object is changed, no matter what the change was. To make the rule more efficient, we will add a condition that will execute the rule only when there is a change in the associated communications.
Now suppose that we also want to show to the user the date of the last communication with the customer. I have created an attribute for this called last communication and we will add rules to calculate it every time a new communication has been added or removed for the customer. Adding or removing a communication is really a change to the list of associated communications. So the condition of our rule is really a change to the list of communications again. Customer communication was changed. The action of the rule should find all communications associated with the customer, sort them in descending order of dates and pick the first one. This can be done using the find action. So here I'm finding all contact nodes which belong to our customer and then I order it by date and take the first one. And now we can assign the date of the found communication to our attribute. Well, I hope this tutorial gives you a good introduction into a where I am rules. The rule language is very powerful and it includes many different actions, expressions and functions. For more details about the rule language, see the user guide and the rule language reference guide. I also recommend that you watch the processes tutorial right after this one. The processes tutorial explains how processes are different from business rules and also explains actions that deal with the user interface.